Hey guys, how you all doing? So Dan from Trading with Dan here. So I was reading this article um, yesterday from the New Yorker and I thought it was pretty interesting. So I thought I'd read it out to you guys. Um, so the article is titled, Have the record number of investors in the stock markets uh, lost their minds um, by John Cassidy. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll summarize it. You guys can, I'll leave the um, article link in the description. But basically he's saying that um, he went on a golfing trip, was talking to a random guy and was telling him that he's, the guy was telling him that he's just been investing, trading in the stock market, day trading in the stock market to um, to just make some extra money, um, but probably more so just to occupy him, to give him something to do, because obviously there's not a lot to do at the moment. Um, so yeah, and and obviously there's there's possibly um, a lot more risks than people are maybe um, maybe aware of in the stock market. Um, so yeah, um, so yes, yeah, so I'll read, read some of it to you guys. So, but the stock market fell for three days in a row um, at the start of this week. Um, and Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, said on Wednesday, "There's a growing sense that the recovery uh, may come more slowly than we would like." In a Zoom presentation at the Economic Club of New York on Tuesday, Stanley Druckenmiller, um, former head fund manager now invests his own money. The risk, um, the risk reward for equities um, is maybe as bad as he's seen in his career. Yet many small investors, like my golfing companion, did not seem phased by these warnings. Um, since the Dow plunged more than 10,000 points in February and March, individual traders have been buying and selling stocks at a record rate. On Thursday, E-Trade, the discount brokerage reported that its daily trading volume in April um, was more than three times its average. Um, and yeah, and other, other trading platforms are basically experiencing similar, similar increases. Um, so yeah, so since the shutdown began, many investors have been taking advantage of this era of free trades. Um, so basically, no commissions, um, no commissions that you can get now. Um, so um, the author of the um, the article says um, he spoke to um, Roger Thaler, um, a Nobel uh, Memorial Prize um, in economics winner, um, and he's saying that um, there'll be a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands. Um, and one friend suggested to me it's replacing gambling. The casinos are closed and there's no sports to bet on. I mean, for me, this is this is the main reason why um, people are trading these markets. Um, because, yeah, there's no casinos open, there's no sports betting. These these are big industries, sports betting and obviously casinos and gambling and etc. So um, stock markets is basically could be seen as a similar sort of um, thing to do so yeah and they're obviously at home they're not doing anything they obviously know there's a lot of movement in in stock markets so it's not like before february when we would just sort of be moving up slowly and not a lot will be happening i mean there's excitement to be had in stock markets at the moment they're all they're all over the all over the place they're all over the chip shop so um so yeah you can see why people are attracted to this um, much the same way that a lot of people are attracted to trading Bitcoin, for example, because Bitcoin is wild and all over the place, and that attracts people in. Um, so for some active traders, his theory just seems to apply. I like betting on sports. Um, Dave Portnoy, um, the founder of Barstool Sports, told Business Insider, sports ended, and this was something that was still going on that he could do during the day. Um, so yeah, this is a famous guy with a lot of money. Um, he's um, I've actually just followed him on Twitter after reading this, just so I can see what what he's doing. But yeah, he's basically just taking big gambles. Well, not big gambles because he's trading with a lot of money. Um, but yeah, he's um, trading with um, a lot of money and just yeah, just posting his trades like making fifty grand trade profits. I think he was saying. Um, yeah, so many small many of the small investors though aren't day trading. They're simply moving money into exchange traded funds or blue chip stocks, some of which have still uh, are still pretty beaten up. Whilst others such as Apple and, and Alphabet um, have already made up most of their losses. Yale economist Robert Schiller, um, who shared the 2013 Nobel Prize in Economics um, for his studies on what drives stock prices, suggested to me that investors are responding um, to a widely shared narrative that says stock prices tend to rebound sharply after a big fall and that you have to get in early to make the biggest gains and I hear the term V-shaped a lot um, he said um, Schiller's book Irrational Exuberance from 2000 came out just before the dot-com bubble burst I read this book and I literally from reading this article I've actually just ordered this book off, off um, Amazon so I can have a read the narrative economics how stories go viral and drive major economic events from the last year from last year explores what it describes um, the power of contagious and um, popular stories that spread throughout the world throughout word of mouth news media and social media 
<laughs> I don't think so much word of mouth there. Not these days. Not when you've got social media eclipsing everything. Um, in standard economic theory, investors are supposed to, be, to carefully weigh things like level of prices, interest rates and expected profits before they invest. But Schiller told me that, that a narrative is often more emotionally compelling and, and resonant than an argument about valuations or something else. But it's not just people. Um, this, is, this is called MOMO trading, momentum trading, MOMO trading. Um, this is how the big how how big algorithms um, that just scan headline headline Twitter um, um, companies reports and everything they, they 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 trade a lot on momentum, or they mainly trade just on momentum. So like it's like a machine, and when the machine likes something, it buys it and it buys it and buys it. And when the machine doesn't like something, it sells it and sells it and sells it, and that produces like a self fulfilling prophecy of of momentum of more selling than more selling and then so i mean these social trends may start and drive momentums but again people are just they're just trading momentum strategies um which which in 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 essence momentum strategies don't care what the asset is they don't care about the valuations they don't care about anything they don't even care about the numbers at the side or whatever they just check, care about where that squiggly line is going and if it's going down generally then they'll sell it when it do you know what i mean when it bounces up a little bit and makes a lower high or, or the opposite when they'll buy something it will make a high low and then they'll just buy it buy it and that's it they don't care um and there is nothing wrong with that um but it, i think it just promotes a lot of volatility in assets because um because yeah i mean they may they the pendulum swings basically that's what that's how it, it is like may, say you've got like a medium level um where um, price should be um, you just swing from one extreme to the other I mean Tesla is a perfect example of just big swings like from 200 to a thousand down to 300 ish down to up to like eight or nine eight or nine eight nine hundred again I think it's about 800 odd or was 800 odd but yeah it's just a pendulum and it's like and it attracts it attracts people the movement attracts people um, so yeah so as as after the stock markets dipped at the end of 2018 and again in spring of last year the market did rebound and quickly reach new highs this strengthened the v-shaped narrative schiller said um so does um, the widespread belief that the federal reserve through its massive asset purchase and put a floor into the stock market the consensus seems to be don't worry the fed has your back drucker miller said in his presentation there is one problem with that our analysis says is not true um, stocks don't always rebound the V-shape. During the last lengthy bear market, which accompanied the Great Recession, stocks, stock prices started falling in September in 2007 and didn't bottom until February 2009, 17 months later. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, the bear market lasted even longer. It began with the Wall Street crash of October 1929 and lasted until the middle of 1932. By then, the market was down about 80% from its pre-crash peak. Stocks didn't hit new highs until the 1950s, so 20 years later. In the current context, that seems like a scary na narrative. Schiller told me that he had been thinking about the Great Depression too. In the early 30s, he reminded me the stock market rallied for a while, much like it's doing now, only to roll over and go into another remorseless decline. But nobody remembers that, Schiller said. The recent past is more resonant. Um, obviously, people, humans have a recency bias. That's just, just how we are. I mean, it's, it's, it's just how we wired up and we just can't help that. It's just how we are. <laughs> Some people do study historical episodes, of course. On Tuesday, Scott Miniard, um, Chief Investment Officer at the Wall Street firm Guggenheim Partners, wrote on Twitter, Stocks have, been, have clearly topped at the recent uptrend. Um, and now we find out if it's 1930s all over again. <laughs> Yeah, stops have clearly topped. Um, I I am of the opinion on the balance of things that um, yeah we have topped and we are going to go down, but nothing's clear in these markets. Nothing, nothing. We have not clearly topped. I mean, to say something like that, um, I mean that's an opinion. Clearly topped is an opinion, um, but him saying clearly topped is an opinion, but saying have clearly topped is actually like a. Is like it's like a fact the statement is a fact but him saying that statement of fact is not a fact it's an opinion um, anyway so at the end of this week stops ended their three-day losing streak the Dow Jones industrial average jumped from nearly 400 jumped nearly 400 points on Thursday and on Friday rose another 60 points until we see what happens to the economy in the coming months 
We won't know for sure if the optimism um, and daring do that small investors are exhibiting is justified or crazy. A rapid recovery could generate a big rebound in corporate profits, which would be supportive of the stock market. An extended economic slump could decimate earnings for years, which would surely crush stocks. The thing is, this um, are small investors exhibit? Um, or basically, are they justified or crazy? I mean, they're not. They're not looking at financial analysis. They're not really looking at buy the dip. They're just looking at gambling. Um, and it's like you'll bet on a football game, like say win or lose. I mean, if the team loses, you lose your money. If the team wins, you win. You win the money. And that's what I think a lot of them are doing anyway. So um, Schiller said this gives him um, some probability um, to the optimistic scenario, but also issued a warning to investors: being in the market at this point is much riskier than it appears because the ultimate outcome of the pandemic is shrouded in so much uncertainty. It's like saying, "When will the next war be?" He said. There are too many factors to consider. For now, at least, many small investors seem happy to ignore those uncertainties and crank up their online trading accounts. They'd be safer sticking to golf. Um, yeah, they probably would be um, safer <laughs> money-wise. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it just is what it is, isn't it, guys? Um, I'm going to do a couple of videos on what, what I believe could be happening because there's, um, there's an Austrian school economic theory um, championed by Ludwig von Mises um, that is a, called a crack up boom so I'm gonna have a, do, a video on a crack up boom because that could be um, what is gonna happen here um, <clears throat> a crack up boom and then also there are differences between now and just other points in the past in the respect that the main difference I see is that in the past the central banks and governments have basically pumped money into the system in various ways, but they have never directly given people actual cash payments. So I do think that offers a different, um, a different um, sort of catalyst, a different um, input to um, what has happened in the past regarding asset prices, because <clears throat> that money's got to go somewhere. People have been given cash and they don't have jobs. Um, like, and there's no sports going on or even if there is sports going on people will be looking at investing and trading people will be looking at financial markets potentially going up and then going up and that's what is called a crack up boom um, sort of a hyperinflation inflation and then hyperinflation of asset prices and stock markets and then <clears throat> that could very easily see more and more, more and more money put into it that could actually spark an economic recovery of sorts um, on the basis that Asset prices will be going up. People will cash out of some of their gains, be able to go and buy things, spend things. I mean, there will be an increase of, um, well, the uh, velocity of money in the system that will further drive inflation, further drive prices up. Further. I mean, that basically um, could be could be, could be what the Fed is angling for. I mean, it's not a great scenario, but when the alternative is basically a complete deflationary collapse of of everything the money system the, of all assets um i mean what are you going to what are you going to choose i mean it's not like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place they're, they're stuck between a rock and a and a not quite as hard place so you're going to take the not quite as hard place and that's basically what i think this um, this crack up boom will be and don't forget these guys these phd's they think um these keynesians they think um, inflation is easy to stop um, you basically just increase taxes and and crank up interest rates, but I mean we, I mean maybe they don't even think that about interest rates anymore and monetary tightening because they just know that um, that it doesn't work and they can't do it. So maybe they're just going for one more, one more, one more blow of the bubble, one more, one more massive literal bubble, absolute massive bubble of everything. Um, and yeah, we're going to see ridiculously high prices and everything. I mean it's fully plausible to me that's that scenario. Um, but that overall economic economic scenario, that thing I'm talking about, doesn't really have much to do at the moment with these people that are um, buying or selling stocks. Just in yeah, just isn't a lot a lot to do with that. I mean, a lot of these guys are putting money recently, and then they have been buying like some of the worst stocks. I mean, so if you look at the Robin Hood accounts, um, they're buying cruise liners, they're buying cruise line companies, um, they're buying um, airline companies, they're buying USO, they're buying things that are going down. So a lot of these guys are losing the money anyway. Um, they only have so much to lose, and once they lost it, it's gone. I mean, they don't, they, they don't. I don't expect, and I'm sure, um, a lot of them don't, um, don't implement um, good risk management strategies. So once they, once they've blown their whatever they get, whatever they've got spare, um, then it's gone. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are important, but what is important, I think, is what the Fed may do going forwards, um, what people's scenarios may be. And um, and this will be just be a trend in asset prices. Like I said, the momentum traders, the trend traders, the trend, um, the trend is your friend for a reason. People, it can be <laughs> like let's just quote all of the um, all of the all of the old stock market adages. But yeah, the trend is your friend, and then and then markets can re remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So like if you think valuation is ridiculous and you're short in the market then you can be the markets can keep going up and up and up and eventually yeah they may crash they may basically go down to practically zero or s p 500 or whatever but in the meantime it's going to go to s p 5000 first and and can you can you hold on that long um so yeah anyway so um yeah interesting article um we do need to i do need to do a video on um the crack up boom because that i think i think is the most likely scenario so we will um we'll see we'll see about that so remember not a financial advice guys i'm not a financial advisor always do your own research and i will speak to you guys soon